I used to walk home from middle school. I did this because my parents used to tell me stories of how they would walk to school, to and from school, uphill both ways in the snow. <laughs> it was about 30 minutes for me to walk home. 15 for a normal person, but I've always been out of shape. I didn't hate it that much. Or maybe I did and I wasn't allowed to complain about it because it wasn't uphill both ways. I was told to be grateful. This guy, Ryan, would also walk home from the same middle school. He lived a few streets over, but we never spoke. He was in the trashy neighborhood, as my parents referred to it. As I said, we only lived a few streets over, so doesn't that mean we also lived in the trashy neighborhood? <laughs> he lived in this house that looked gross from the outside, with trash in the front yard, and the windows had Mickey Mouse sheets as curtains. Ryan would call me a fire crotch. <laughs> My insecure ass was absolutely fine with that because <laughs> there were plenty of things he could call me that would hurt my feelings and fire crotch just wasn't one of them. <laughs> he would say, oh, look who it is, the fire crotch. And I would tilt my head further down and hope that that was all the bullying he was going to do that day. I remember thinking about the term fire crotch. I mean, it sounded kind of cool. <laughs> if I was a superhero, I would have the power to shoot flames from my penis. <laughs> I could use this to fly or melt the snow off the driveway in a second. I really didn't mind. As time went on, bullies found other things to pick on me for, and Ryan had to move. The rumors were he got kicked out because he brought drugs to school, but my parents told me that his parents got divorced and he went to go live with his mom. I remember thinking that sounded kind of nice. I didn't know his parents, but maybe he didn't have Mickey Mouse sheets as curtains at his mom's house. Looking back, I think I was just jealous his parents got divorced. People would say things about my red hair, but never referring to my private parts. Ryan was the only one brave enough to reference my, pub my pubic hair. <laughs> I've always wondered if he originally said it because he wanted to hurt my feelings, but then seeing that it didn't, he kept it going as something we could just share, the two of us. <laughs> Almost like he respected me and had to keep up the bullying persona. I remember trying to fall asleep and thinking about flying through the sky and getting out of this small town, all with the power of my fire crotch. About six years later, I was in high school, and a friend of mine came out as bi. This was huge because it meant that I could potentially hit the milestones that all my friends had already hit. I, had, I hadn't had my first awkward hand job or teethy blow job. I hadn't even had my first kiss. So I flirted, he flirted back, and we decided we would hook up. It was that easy in that moment, maybe because I was just extra horny as teenagers or because I was better at flirting back in the day. I went and picked him up in the car my grandfather gave me and drove the two of us to my middle school parking lot. The same middle school my parents considered walking distance from my house. It was winter and the second we parked the car, the windows fogged up. I thought that was kind of sexy. We talked for a while and then he grabbed me and I had my first kiss. I didn't like the grab and kiss, but I was definitely too afraid to make any kind of move and he knew that. I do remember thinking it was sort of like hot that he couldn't help himself, but looking back it was sort of a yikes moment. I remember being so happy that it was happening, but disappointed that he pulled on my cardigan. It went fast after that. He told me to take my clothes off and he would do the same. I tried to slow the whole thing down by taking my time taking my clothes off and folding all of them. <laughs> I could hear my mom in the back of my head screaming that he would think I was a slob if I didn't fold my clothes. There are only so many clothes to take off and only so many ways to fold a cardigan, but now I'm naked. This felt so awkward because we were both just naked in my car and we have to survey each other's bodies. Like seconds ago, we were discussing the plot holes in the latest episode of Glee, and now I'm looking at the first hard penis that wasn't mine I've seen IRL. Not only am I looking at his naked body, but he's also looking at mine. What do you say in this situation? Like I can't say, wow, nice cock, without the whole thing being a silly joke. But if I didn't say anything, he could take it as a sign that I was unapproving of said cock. <laughs> Lucky, luckily, in that moment, he spoke first. He looked at me and said, oh, I didn't think you would have a fire crotch. <laughs> now, with hindsight, duh, I have orange hair. Did any part of him think that that orange hair stopped and changed colors? And wouldn't that be more upsetting? <laughs> Did Ryan mean to say it in the tone that this naked man in front of me just said it? If he did, it wouldn't have been as magical or silly to me. Or maybe he did say it the same way and I was just more insecure now. When Ryan would say it, I would feel how scared he was. 
He didn't want to hurt me, at least that's what I told myself at the time. I felt like he didn't know anything besides the lewd comments that he was taught or learned when no one was around. Like his parents either said mean things to him or just ignored him to the point where he was able to consume media not exactly suitable for someone his age. I bet he spent a lot of time alone. There was no way for me to know because I never said a word to him. But, and while those Mickey Mouse sheets were kind of goofy, they did stop the world from looking in. Sitting in my veteran grandfather's van with the heat turned all the way up and the windows completely fogged, I thought about what this person just said to my fully naked self. It clearly changed my mood because I lost my boner. We continued the sexual aspect of the experience, but my heart wasn't in it. I felt self-conscious and embarrassed. I know the first time is usually bad, and all things considered, mine wasn't the worst, but it changed me. Sure, now I can tell my friends I had my first kiss and it was with a boy, but I was playing adult games without a rule book. No one told me about sex or intimacy, and especially not gay sex. I checked something off my to-do list without being prepared for the consequences. After it was done, I told my friends that I had finally hooked up and it was awesome. I didn't mention that comment or the fact that he came on my cardigan. I, it's not that sad. It's totally fine. I ended, I ended up shaving my pubes for the next few years. I was no longer able to fly out of this town with the power of my super penis. I grew less and less insecure about my hair being orange and more and more about everything else. The world grew scarier and scarier, and the superheroes I thought I had received at birth sort of faded away, and instead of saving me, they got wrapped up in trying to save themselves. I would love to tell you all that I love my pubic hair again, and Ryan and I ended up getting married because he was such a fan of orange. <laughs> but that did not happen. I did stop shaving them, though. Some days I see my naked body in the mirror, and I hate every square inch of it. Other days I put on a Gaga song and dance naked and proud. I'm a work in progress. Being a superhero sounds hard anyway. I mean, shooting fires isn't also like super dangerous and not crazy helpful. <laughs> plus, I can't imagine it pays well. Plus, plus, how could I aim with just my penis? That doesn't seem precise enough for something as dangerous as fire. <laughs> so Ryan and the fire crotch would only exist in that moment. A moment looking back, I think we both needed a superhero then. And while that superhero won't be able to help me with my taxes or the cycle of abuse surrounding my childhood, I think they helped me as a kid. After I graduated college, I packed my bags and moved to Los Angeles. I needed to be away from the scary world that my family home had become and make something of myself. As I stepped on the plane, I, said, I looked at the pilot and I said, hey, if you lose an engine, I've got a backup for you right here. <laughs> I didn't say that. Oh my god, post 9-11. <laughs> I'm learning to love this crotch of mine, and while that power isn't as good as shooting fires, it is the one I have right now.